Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Thursday, February 4th. And from another DeWine update to more information about the coronavirus vaccine from Lucas County, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, there is some frigid cold moving in this weekend. So I'm gonna pass it off to our first alert weather team. We have a first alert day up. Just think of it as from now through tomorrow morning, heavy snow and rain from right now through 10 p.m. Slushy accumulations are going to develop and significant icing is going to be possible overnight into the morning tomorrow. And I will step you through that hour by hour. Here's a wider look at the storm. There are winter storm warnings up in the snow belt areas of lower Michigan, the UP and places like Green Bay and out in Iowa. There is a blizzard warning and winter storm warnings for heavy snow in the northwest Illinois. When you zoom in closer here, the National Weather Service has put up a winter weather advisory in southeast lower Michigan and uh, Williams and Fulton counties. There isn't one up for Lucas County, but we have you covered with a first alert day for this evening as the snow is about to move into the area. I've gotten reports uh, from off to the west and uh, from uh, places like uh, Pettisville and over toward Defiance. The snow is coming down and it's working its way into the Toledo area. These are always tough when you look at radar uh, because with snowfall, Radar is very sensitive now, so much of the lighter blue shades are areas where it's not making it to the ground, but in the darker blue shades, it's pretty heavy and visibilities are being reduced right now across Williams and Defiance counties. That is all coming toward the Toledo area. Here is six o'clock. We'll run it up to 7 p.m. A heavy rain and snow mixture at this time. Uh, over top of Southern Wood County and the Findlay area down toward Upper Sandusky through 8 p.m. That slides up into the east half of our viewing area. 9 o'clock and then 10 o'clock, there's still a chance of snow and a rain-snow mix. And here's the tricky part for Toledo. It may snow for a few hours, change to rain, and rain onto the top of that. After that happens, a cold front comes zipping through tonight and by tomorrow morning it will be cold, it will be windy, the wind that chills will be brutal and because of the possibility of icing up, delays will be possible and we're talking about walkways and roads tomorrow morning. According to the Toledo Lucas County Health Department, so far 35,669 people have been vaccinated against the coronavirus in the county, which is about 8.33% of the population. Next week, K-12 school staff in Lucas County will start getting vaccinated, and Health Commissioner Eric Dijinsky said the department has a goal of getting the shot out to 8,000 people within a two-day span, which is set for next Friday and Saturday at the University of Toledo ROTC Hall. Now, if you are a school staff member and plan to get vaccinated through your district, here are some do's and don'ts. To be clear, this information right now is only relevant for school staff, not other Ohioans who wish to be vaccinated. So if you work for a school, do not use public sign-up links and do not call 211 for scheduling. But do contact your school administrators with questions. Some situations they can help with are if you're not available during selected vaccination times, if you couldn't get an appointment this week, and if you weren't included in the initial eligible list. Now, again, this is for school staff only. If you are 65 and older, you will need your own appointment and you should call 211 if you need help scheduling or your county's area office on aging. Those 65 and older qualify for the vaccine next week, but can start registering right now. If you need information on how you can register in Northwest Ohio and in Southeast Michigan, I have handy links ready for you in the description of this video, or you can text the word vaccine to 419-248-1100 and have them sent straight to your phone. And it is important to remember that the coronavirus vaccine currently remains in short supply and the county does not get more doses as more people get added to the eligibility list. So essentially what this means is the vaccine becomes even more scarce when more groups get added until production levels increase. So appointments are going fast, but there are always cancellations so you can continue checking throughout the week if you're unable to make an appointment right now. And on Thursday, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services updated its current epidemic order to allow contact sports to resume on Monday. Here are the conditions. Contact sports are allowed as long as participants are masked during play or practice. If masks can't be worn, participants must be regularly tested for COVID-19, consistent with guidelines issued by the health department. And sports organizers are encouraged to administer a testing program even if it is not required. Participants need to stay six feet apart when not actively engaged in play, and they should wear face masks at all times. Spectators are allowed with up to 250 people in stadiums that seat less than 10,000, and up to 500 people at venues that seat over 10,000 people. The order remains in effect through Monday, March 29th. 
And MDHHS has been closely monitoring three metrics, and Michigan continues to see improvements. Hospital capacity dedicated to COVID-19 patients has been in a 10-week decline, with current capacity at 6.6% for beds with COVID-19 patients. Overall case rates are also going down and is currently at 159 cases per million after peaking at 740 cases per million just on Saturday, November 14th. And the state's positivity rate is currently at 4.9% and still going down. This is the first time positivity rate has been this low since mid-October. But now let's look at Ohio. One highlight from today's press conference with Governor Mike DeWine is that the number of coronavirus patients continues to go down. Today, there was a total of 2,252 COVID-19 positive patients in Ohio's hospitals, marking the third consecutive day the state saw less than 2,500 hospitalizations. And if the current trend continues, the current statewide curfew could be lifted next week. Thursday. But it is important to remember that even if the curfew does go away, if numbers go back up, it could always be put back into place. And while we still have a shortage of the vaccine, some relief could be in sight. Pfizer expects to increase the amount of vaccine available for federal shipment by about 40% sometime in the middle of February. DeWine said this federal increase should then translate to an increase in doses for the state of Ohio. Pfizer has also reported that at the very least, by the end of March, vaccine shipments to Ohio should double compared to where the state is now. For perspective, right now, Pfizer is shipping 73 doses to Ohio each week. And Moderna doses have already increased slightly for Ohio from 73,200 two weeks ago to 105,600 on the way next week. And a familiar face to the DeWine administration could soon be organizing her own political campaign. Former Ohio Department of Health Director Dr. Amy Acton confirmed today that she is at least considering a run for the U.S. Senate as a Democratic candidate in Ohio next year. This announcement comes just seven months after Acton stepped down from her post as ODH director, and during her time in that role, she became one of the faces of the state's response to the coronavirus pandemic. And despite winning national awards for her work, she became a polarizing figure in the state, especially among Republicans who felt the state's measures had become too strict. As a reminder, last week, Republican Senator Rob Portman announced that he will not seek re-election next year, opening up one of the state's two seats in the U.S. Senate. And if Dr. Acton does run, it would bring immediate star power to that race, which is already expected to draw plenty of attention. Other Democratic candidates in Ohio who have been linked to a potential 2022 U.S. Senate run include Representative Tim Ryan and Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.